bulletproof radio, a state of high performance. Now, how do you know if, okay, putting the brain tap on, like I'm gonna do whatever the program is, how do I know that's gonna work for my brain versus for your brain? Well, I kind of tell people this, the difference between this and neurofeedback, just to put that in perspective, is neurofeedback's like going to the gym, you get a personal trainer, of course, that's gonna be more targeted to your brain. You get to focus right on that brain function. Now, what we do is we're gonna take you through the circuit training. So this is like going to um, the gym, but you, you should already know what you're gonna do. But we have a lot of professionals that recommend different things. So let's say that you're doing alpha training or mm. whatever, theta training or gamma training using neurofeedback. What you do is you do that training first. And then you do this. But most people, we know there's a book out called The, the Master Brainwave by Ann Weiss. She was mm -hmm. the person that we consulted with in the early 90s. She's yeah. passed away now. She's, yeah, she's an old, yeah. uh, older yeah. author in this yeah. space, right? Yeah, and she was from San Francisco. And ba basically what she did is we, she went around the world measuring people's brains with the capacity they had at that time, which was called the mind mirror, which is nothing like what we have yeah. today. <laughs> very, prim <laughs> but, very primitive. Yeah, it was LED screens and told people what was going on. But what she found out was, Every person's brain that was a high achiever, captain of industry, performance in sports, they all had the certain rhythm to their brain, about 45% beta, 30% alpha, and the rest kind of went, went down mm -hmm. like a mountain. And if that's not happening while you're awake, then you don't have the efficiency because you can't flow through these states. You want to be able to flow back and forth. So what we do is we train to that, what we call the master brainwave. So what's nice about our brain, kind of like chiropractic is the best example is, when we know, because we've hooked people up to EEG, when somebody's getting an adjustment, the brain basically lights up. It puts so much energy into the brain, that's why some people like it, some people don't. Mm -hmm. If they're sensitive in their nervous system, they're gonna say, man, that chiropractor, what, what happened? But if they're like me, I wanna hear my bones cracking. Yeah. You know, like the, uh, but in the, what happens is we know it reorganizes the whole brain. Then the brain goes back to its optimal state not the state it was in before the chiropractic adjustment, but we have a genetic code or a memory on all levels that says this is the perfect Dave Asprey and this is how you would operate in whatever the optimum state is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the brain the opportunity. We don't stick in any one state. One thing that is really important for people to know is it's not about one state. It's not about 10 hertz frequency. It's not about 11 hertz frequency. It's not about 7.8 hertz frequency. It's about training the brain to go to all those frequencies and giving your brain the chance. What we found over time, we used to do it with galvanic skin response systems oh, yeah. and, and all those <laughs> kind of things. But what we, what we noticed was everybody's brain mm -hmm. regulates back to whatever is normal for them but not normal like when they showed up because they usually mm -hmm. showed up stressed out. I'm mean, talking about clinical now. They're, they showed up stressed out, worried, whatever. And basically once they do that, it's, it's almost like they offloaded luggage. Mm -hmm. All this stress left their body and then the brain regulates back. It doesn't change the brain in a way that says this is permanent. Okay. Like um, some people, over the years, there used to be a, a program called the Dolphin Mind. Yep, and it was that. one of the very first electro, uh, cranial electrical programs and it was really cool you know but what they found was it actually was damaging to the brain that's why they it's not on the market anymore they have a lower voltage one you know and things like that which it, which is good for some things but that causes damage just like magnetic resonant therapy they have those programs they do change the brain but it's more it works on a damage approach like lifting weights does well it depends yeah. on the strength level and the frequency yeah. Yeah. right mm. you know some of the the heavy duty pemf stuff yeah. that i'll use for muscles and joints mm. and you know making your neck not hurt for the yeah. first time in your life mm -hmm. you might not want to put that right on your head and turn it to full strength because i don't think that's wise but right. i know some people who like to do that but that isn't my recommendation right. depending upon how our nervous system your whoever is doing it their nervous system is in good shape they can handle that kind of energy. But that we, like you were talking about the cells, we have something called the cell danger response. If one group of cells starts to feel, because let's say we're getting EMF and we can't handle that, and we're one of the 20% that gets damaged, then the cells start to shut down. Mm -hmm. And so, but if we're, if we're open to that and we know, hey, this is a safe place, safe environment, then the body can handle it. And you know, we're always, people like yourself are always looking for ways, we know this is gonna happen, we're not gonna avoid electric smog, right? Yeah. But we have to have ways to combat that.